Well, Jim, coming out of Manscaped, and uh, now that I think about it, this is a horrible transition, but Jim, <laughs> uh, we wanted to uh, wild card, as we say here on the show every now and then. Something that was unexpected, but something we thought was worth some time to check it out because a lot of people something were talking about thought, it. Something you thought. You thought. Well, I think that if a lot of people were talking about something, it's worth checking it out before you either dismiss it or praise it or whatever it may be. But this past weekend, Stardom in Japan ran a show, All-Star Grand Queendom. <clears throat> it was, I believe, their biggest show ever. I'm trying to see if there's a crowd listed. 5,539 people attended in Yokohama. Well, I saw 14 of them on the video. It's a quiet audience, and they usually film these rooms very dark for whatever reason. Not just them, but every uh, New Japan does the same thing. But the match that you watched was the IWGP Women's Champion, Mercedes Monet, versus Mayu Iwatani. Yes, yes, it was. Is that uh, that was the uh, setup? That was the pitch. <laughs> that was the pitch. Oh boy! So I've seen Uncle Dave report on stardom, and it's supposed to be, I guess, it is the the biggest ladies promotion over there in Japan, affiliated with New Japan, correct? Owned by the same parent company? Owned by the same company, yes. So that they got a budget, no doubt about that. No, the reason I said you, I saw 14 of them, they shot the hard camera is directly across from the entranceway. There's 5,000 people in that building. You don't see any of them on the hard camera at all. That's right. There's nobody on the other side of the ring. It looks like they're wrestling in a fucking airplane hangar. And that was an odd artistic choice, if nothing else. And... I've never seen one of these shows <laughs> and, and you sent me the link from an unnamed source and it was six hours long and you help helpfully said, well, start at fucking four hours and 50 something minutes or whatever. But as I was, I had to just click ahead about an hour and a half, right? Just see where I landed. And I can tell you, I'm never going to watch an entire one of these shows because I landed somewhere where there were like eight girls in the fucking ring just staggering around, throwing thing, throwing kicks and chops and various things at each other that may or may not have landed. I don't know what the fuck was going on. But I get to the Sasha Monet match. Mercedes Monet. Well, yes. And actually, well, she pronounces it money, if you notice, when she was talking. Well, I tried to not listen. Oh. Um, it, this they have a budget. It's shot very high high tech, as I mentioned. You can't see many of the fans. Um, the commentary was in English of uh, some girl and some guy with English accents. And the first thing I noticed are those. If this was tennis, they would be ball boys where when somebody misses, they run across the court and get the ball, right? And then run back to the sidelines. They have ball girls. Like they run around and when the girls do a dive out of the ring, the ball girls get in between the wrestlers and the front row and help catch them and make sure they don't land in the front row. Is that what I was seeing? Well, I think they have just the same, the same way Japanese wrestling companies always had young boys. I think it's the same concept. And if they, they were, never caught the fucking guys, well, they were giant. Baba wasn't diving off the top rope into the crowd. I'm sure if he was, he would have said, "Tenru, catch me." I I never saw anybody catch Tiger Mask. Well, that's a little different. They stayed out of the fucking way. He was moving very and, fast. And these ball girls were also uh, kneeling around the ring, clapping on the mat to get the people going during the quiet spots. Isn't that kind of like cheating? Cheating how? Artificial fucking... They're not managers. They're not par participants in the match. Did you ever see the young boys during Fujinami and Kingo Kimura start slapping on the mat to get the people going because they were on their ass? No, I don't remember that. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> so anyway, as far as the match, honestly... They didn't fuck anything up that I saw. I think Sasha went for her finish once that the announcers kept saying, whoa, she didn't get all of it, but I don't really know what it's supposed to look like anyway. But they hit harder. 
than the U.S. girls' matches. They definitely are laying the kicks in. It was a modern-style match. It just was better than what we see on AEW television and some of the, you know, more middle card dreck of the WWE girls, but it was still a... Did I mention a modern-style match? They did shit. Countless moves and kicks back and forth, over and over. And it started dragging for me because it all looked the same. And then, you know, <laughs> there was nothing wrong with it if you like women's wrestling amongst, you know, one girl that you might know and one girl that if you're a big fan of Japanese girl wrestling, you've probably seen her. But unless you speak Japanese, you probably don't know too much about her personality. So they're doing moves. And Sasha gave her a big move, and then she popped right up and gave Sasha a big move. <laughs> and then old Maya hit a tombstone pile driver on... Mercedes, I'm sorry, but didn't cover her. Was going to go climb to the top rope, but Mercedes, who had just got tombstone, grabbed onto the girl's leg and wouldn't get her, wouldn't let her go to the top rope. But then finally, she did, and she did hit a moonsault and got a two count. And then she got up. Too many pronouns, pal. Maya got up and did a bridging German suplex, one, two, three. So she basically gave Sasha a tombstone, but Sasha was still alive. So she fucking stomped her or whatever she did and then hit a moonsault and got a two count and then just picked her up and did a bridging German suplex and got a three count. So the finish was kind of flat as four o'clock, but I wasn't going to complain because that was the end of the match and I was looking for that. I mean... It, it's a modern style match just with the girls hitting harder instead of the girls not hitting at all or the guys hitting like pussies over here. It still didn't make a lot of sense to me besides moves back and forth, but at least they laid it in somewhat. But I get, you know, there's a market for that over there in Japan. They have a lot of different pursuits apparently and, lines of work where they put young girls in those spots and then watch the hilarity that ensues. I don't know what else to say. I thought it was a pretty good match. There were spots that I thought they, I don't know how to put it. It was like uh, they expected the move, so they they were a little too early with what they did or things looked a little sloppy. But the person I really wanted you to see in this promotion was Julia. But I was told by several people who watch, this may not be the best match to show him. <laughs> That was on this show because they did some stuff that she wouldn't normally do, but she's really good and really striking looking, and I think she'll probably get signed by one of the companies here eventually. To what you saw here, you see all the hype and all the buzz on social media about Sasha Banks, Mercedes Monet. What do you think after seeing this? Do you understand any of it, or are you puzzled by it? Um, I'm not necessarily puzzled because we've figured out that there's a lot of people on Twitter and or social media in general that are very dedicated to a lot of things that you scratch your head and go, boy, why would they like that? Uh, so that's not puzzling. And, uh, you know, I, mean, I don't, I don't see her as being the biggest woman's wrestling star in the history of the world. I'm not sure that I see that she's, you know, the biggest wrestling star, a female wrestling star, you know, right now in that company, maybe, because, I mean, she's been there, what, three or four times they were trying to get an American audience, which they apparently have to some extent, but I would think that the girls that the primary audience knows would still be the most popular in that company. Um... I don't, the Meteora thing she does is cool, but she's going to destroy your knees. I, yeah. I, you know, I, I don't see anything to write home about. I'm sorry. What else can I say? 
Not much, but a couple of follow-ups for you after that. And again, when there's a big stardom match, we will check it out and give it a fair chance just to make sure that we're seeing what's going on. But you brought up that the girls in the stardom match were doing the modern style. This is a problem across promotions. Almost every wrestler, same style, same type of things. Let me run past you, let me throw you this way and then turn this way. Here's my kick. I mean, it's the same kind of stuff you see everywhere. It's video games. How do you it's break vi- that? They, I don't know. I don't know. They all play them. And I guess that that's what they all look like. So that's what they think fighting is supposed to be, is a video game. Because, you know, if, at least when we had athletes and or just tough guys <laughs> getting into the business, they knew what a fight was kind of supposed to look like because they'd been in a bunch so they could kind of replicate that and the emotion that you're in while you're in it. I don't get the idea that a lot of these guys in the business now ever get mad. And I mean, really mad, not like he hurt my feelings. I'm talking about, I'm going to get that motherfucker. I'm going to squeeze his neck till his britches are fucking full. No, that's called, they go to HR. That's called getting mad. Well, then they they can't simulate it when they never fucking do it. And so that's it. The matches look like video games, and they're trying to recite dramatic monologues instead of getting mad and trash-talking somebody. And that's why it looks like it all takes so long, and it all blends together to me. 